I know you're not a fan of different diet labels, whether it be vegan, keto, carnivore, which is what I want to get into now because it counters a lot of what we've been talking about today. So carnivore diets going to essentially have no fiber to feed the gut microbiome. So I'm curious because there is this momentum within that paradigm, at least in the online space, people talking about how it's been a diet that's helped them, at least in the short term, improve their health. How do you think about that? Well, I can see why it helps people short term. Um, often it means they are eating whole foods, cutting out junk foods, cutting out a lot of these chemicals and things that are, that are uh, harmful to them, uh, reduces some of their appetite cravings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a sort of reductionist diet that's cutting out a lot of junk food but um where it might be a, a good way to get started you know have a, a clean break it is in my view absolutely for 99 percent of people not sustainable and not good long term for their health because it it will rapidly diminish the the quality of the gut microbiome and it can be very difficult to recover from it. So I think it's uh, it's mis misguided as a long-term um, way of life. I think it's fine as a short-term fix, you know, just like keto diets. Um, but I don't think they're sus easily sustainable, both from a for most people from a um, practicality point of view, but also um, as a long-term health point of view. And I think, you know, what I'd like is, yes, I'm quite happy for people to eat meat as long as they can still get a diversity of plants. And I think there ought to be ways of, um, you know, being more flexible within these diets to say, okay, I still like to have my meat. I'm not, I'm not going to have starchy vegetables. Okay. So you cut out your potatoes, your rice, your pasta. That's fine. But I'm going to have still get my, variety of plants to keep my gut microbes happy and you know try that but, you know don't be so rigid that you're gonna you know let dogma uh mess up your immune system and your your gut health um you know i'm not saying there aren't some people on the planet that don't do well on this you know we know that um you know eskimos and maasai and whatever can live you know have genetically evolved to live on very different diets can do so but I think for the majority of us, that's going to be pretty tough. Well, that's a big part of your message as a whole. The fact that we are all different and we need to look at what's going to work for us in our biology, which might not work for our neighbor. Yeah, that's why I'd, you know, I'm not dismissing everybody. You know, There aren't some people in the world that can't do very well on a predominantly meat diet or, you know, why it doesn't find there are billions of people who are, you know, total vegans. Um, we are omnivores. We're flexible. You know, we've evolved to live in different parts of the, of, of the world. But I think to optimize our health, most of us need to think of this extra organ in our body, which is the gut microbiome. And, and if it's a bit like saying, well, I don't mind eating, but I'm, I, you know, I'm not interested in my liver or my heart. You know, they can do what they like. You know, um, you do need them. And so uh, we need to think the same about our, our microbes. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. I think we've, we've gone far too far the wrong way and we need to get back to much more natural methods, certainly. That's my go-to um, oil and it, I think it's going to be the best.